Ooh, doesn't make any sense. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, okay. If you haven't seen a script before, it kind of looks something like this. We're going to be taking a couple pages from Cowboys and Aliens, directed by John Favreau in 2011, and it was based off of a comic book. I don't know anything about the movie. Scripts are written in a way that it gives you enough description to tell you how to shoot things, but it doesn't tell you the exact shot. It tells you location, setting, whatever, it tells you who's speaking, and sometimes they'll be specific about the action. They won't tell you what shots you should be using in this sequence, right? That's that's up to us. They don't really talk about pacing, they don't really talk about sound effects. I got this script off of imsdb.com. They have scripts for quite a few movies, but I'm not sure if they are official. Regardless, we'll just use it because it was a, uh, it was good enough, I guess. So if we start here up at the top, X EXT stands for up here. EXT stands for exterior, so that means outside, outside town, Main Street Day. So that tells you the location and whatnot, right? And then it says a couple of things like a crooked sign reading absolution. The town is dismal and forgotten. Crumbling buildings blistered by sun. The man rides in dehydrated. The wound draining him. His eyes fall in the first building he sees a church. This is kind of what a script sounds like. They give you descriptions of the place, like the town. They talk about the person riding in. They describe him a little bit and then they describe what he saw. Already, I have a couple ideas in mind. And then we go interior church day, bam. The door flies open and votive candles flicker. The man looks at the dog and says, stay. Um, this should have been in quotes like that and it should have been centered. Uh, so the script is kind of, anytime someone talks, it should be like in the center here. It's not formatted properly, but whatever. So the dog sits by the door as a man enters, empty. He's moving into a small kitchen area, area, bottle of whiskey, uncorks it with his teeth, drinks, pours some on the wound, then a pistol cocks behind him. Meet Meacham, town preacher, a tough washfoot Baptist. Meacham, palms to heaven, friend. The man freezes up, freezes, turns up his hands. In shot, Meacham says, only two kinds of men get shot, criminals and victims. Which one are you? The man in black, don't know. And Meacham hears the honesty in his voice, knows a lost soul when he sees one, lowers his gun, softening, got a name, son? Don't know that either. And so that's page one, right? There's a lot going on already. Even in one page of script, that's quite a bit. Script pages, in terms of time on screen, each page is the equivalent of one minute of screen times. If you have a 90 minute movie, you have a 90 minute script or a 90 page script. If you have a 60 minute movie, you have a 60 page script. And in terms of action adventure storyboarding, which is about typically 22, 21 minutes, your script should be closer to 20 to 21 pages. Uh, Kupo Box asks, do you treat the key moments any differently versus the non-key moments during this process? It's a good question. I do treat the key moments different. As I read through that, I was thinking about a couple of things. What is this scene about? Why does it matter? How do I best convey this? What is the mood feeling, right? Those are the important questions in terms of story. Like this is, this is all story questions and the stuff that's most important in terms of the meat and potatoes. This scene is about a cowboy riding into town. He's been wounded and we meet this preacher who seems like a good guy-ish while also being tough. The mood is, the, at least for the, the rider is kind of downtrodden, a little bit hurt, kind of slow, not, not too much action going on, but high intensity. So I think about that, think about the characters, how they would act. What other story stuff was happening in that? There's a dog. Yeah, so the two main characters are the priest and the man in black. The man in black is wounded. And the scene is about them kind of getting to know each other. There's more pages, we'll get to that. The other things I think about is logistical stuff. Where is this taking place? Um, what kind of limitations do we have? And that means, at least for animation, they give you designs. If they give you a design of the church, use that design. Don't make up some new design. Don't make, or don't use parts of the church that haven't been designed before. Let me look up a picture of a church. So let's say we got a, a picture of a church like this. This is the outside of the church. And what I mean by limitations is if they, if they drew out this picture, they only designed this front part of the church. They didn't design the back side of the church. So don't have your characters on the back side of the church, right? Only have them on the front or on this side of the church. You don't want them making up new drawings. You don't have to force them to design something that's unnecessary. So that's that's a limitation that I'm talking about. Who is in the scene? What are they doing and how many lines do they have? So the people in the scene are the man in black, Meacham, and the dog. That's pretty easy to stage. That's two people talking. The dog is by the door, doesn't really move around. And I would imagine the church, there's a small kitchen area, bottle, 
I don't know where the small kitchen area would be in a church. Like I've never been to a church that has a kitchen in the in the main in the main hall. Like uh, I'm kind of confused by that. This is like logistical stuff that I'm talking about. Like okay, like if it's in a church, where's that? kitchen area in the church that seems a little weird right like do we need a kitchen area maybe maybe it takes the alcohol from like the, the altar instead that would make more sense like he's he's really wounded he doesn't care at this point he you can tell he's not religious because he just takes it off of the altar and pours on his wound which is more important um it could set up some really cool shots that way and you wouldn't have to explain why there's a kitchen in this church maybe if we continue along we'll find out more about that but already i'm kind of like oh that seems a little weird that there would be a, a kitchen. All right, that's like one logistical thing that I'm thinking about. Uh, let's see what other things, what other props or important information do we need to see? Where's the dog in all this? It's probably outside on the porch, I guess. Like maybe over here somewhere he walks past it. What does the lighting look like? It said they use votive candles, so it's probably a little bit dark in there. Maybe we could get some good imagery with like a uh, stained glass. I don't know if there would be stained glass windows in the Wild West. Okay, that's, that's enough information for us to go off of right now, right? It's, we don't have to lock down everything. We have a pretty good idea of what obstacles we're facing. And this is the reflecting part, right? So we did the reading part. Now we're reflecting. We're trying to pull out what's important. I think what's important is showing that he's wounded. I think it's important that we show that the priest is kind of like a good person and kind of trust him, even though he shouldn't. And we should show the man in black's kind of confusion. He's like, he doesn't know his name. He doesn't know where he is or how he got the wound. And I think we need to kind of convey that confusion in him and convey the importance of all of this scene as being like a weird setup and weird for him and weird for the priest and so in this reflecting process i'm trying to identify everything that is important and any problems i might face with the scene in my mind i will run through possible story scenarios before finally settling on one this is what the reflecting part of rrww is about you want to find the problems you want to kind of work them out before you start drawing or writing or anything and you want to find out what you want to play up what story beats does that all make sense does that answer your question so we'll go to page two the priest goes what do you know the man black English and then it says interior church rectory later so it, it cuts to a different scene maybe a time uh, this would be like a time jump I guess or a time skip uh, candle flame a needle passing through it it's later and Meacham studying the man's wounds Meacham odd wound looks cauterized means something burned it half closed the man just stares, news to him, and now as Meacham leans over the wound, the metal cross around his neck begins to twitch, lifting ever so slightly off his chest towards the strange bracelet on the man's wrist. Meacham reacts. Nice trick. That's some kind's magnet? That's some kind's magnet? The man looks at him. What the hell is a magnet? Meacham shrugs it off, readies the needle. Meacham says, try and hold still. He pokes a hot needle through the wound. The man winces slightly but bears the pain. Meacham... Where'd you ride in from? West. Woke up in the desert. Looking up at the sun like I'd been dropped out of the sky. Meacham. Seems I remember a story about that. Happening once. A fellow by the name of Lucifer. He grins. How about I just call you Luke for short. But the man's just distracted by his reflection in a cracked mirror. His own face unfamiliar. Meacham nods toward the man's hands. Okay, so that's page two. We'll just finish off with page three and then we'll start breaking it down. Meacham goes... That blood yours? Beecham goes, that blood yours or somebody else's? The man in black. Three men rode up, drew on me. My hands moved on their own. Uh, a beat for Meacham. Anything else you want to confess to while you got my attention? And the man senses somehow that YGG there is, or you there is, but... Okay, that's weird, but... Man black, everything that happened before I woke up. It's it's gone. Meacham, well, too bad. Can't absolve you for your sins if you don't recall them. That being said, and then Meacham looks up, eyes twinkling. This is not a fire and brimstone preacher. This is a guy who gets it. I've seen bad men do good things and good men do bad things. Whether you end up in heaven or hell, it's not God's plan. It's yours. And then beat. You just got to remember what it was. The man considers darkly. What if I don't want to remember? Meacham, a beat and then grins and then you're probably going to hell. And on cue, smash, the stained glass window explodes as a Molotov cocktail hurtles into the church. Fire spreads around the pews. Meacham activates, tears curtains off the confessional, uses them to stamp out the fire. Damn it, it's Dollar Hyde's men. 
whoops and hollers and gunshots outside the man worlds to see a dozen men on horseback marauding, marauding the town, marauding through town. Okay, so now we know a lot of things, right? One, we know that the man in black has no idea what he's doing. We also know his name is going to be called Luke from now on. He has some weird bracelet on his hand that is new. We didn't know about that before. It first shows up it right here. It has some magnetic abilities, which is good to know. There's a cracked mirror somewhere in the building. There is, they're in the rectory. I, we have to find out what that looks like. That blood yours. And I don't want to confess to see what good men do that. There is a stained glass window in here. They need to be near it or they need to be somewhere near it. And there need to be curtains in the confessional, right? These are kind of all the things that we need to keep in mind when we go forward with storyboarding the sequence because they will be important to the scene. The bracelet on his hand is really important because that is weird for one. And I think that's part of the cowboys and aliens part of this. The other part is where in the church they are. I don't know if they have to be in some new area per se. Like, I don't think we need to necessarily make it more complicated than it already is, especially since we maybe the design doesn't have it. Let's just say that there isn't a rectory. Let's just say they all do it in the main hall and we'll figure out a way from there. We can't, We know that the scene is now about these two people talking. We see that Michom is a kind of a really laid back priest. Feels kind of maybe like a people's champion. Whereas the man in black is this weird mysterious person that doesn't know anything and kind of wants to hide from his past. I'm thinking kind of like a Wolverine type character. Very like, he has a dark past and he's kind of doesn't want to say too much more about it than that. So we're reflecting on this. We're reflecting on it. We've read through it. Maybe we would read through it again a couple more times to get the flow of the dialogue to see what parts we want to pull out, see how it feels. Since we don't have time for that, we're just going to go right into the shots now. We're going to go straight into what the shots I would choose. So we kind of started already with the first page. It's kind of a lot. Let's try to do one page of thumbnails tonight. Maybe looks up and we see him looking drained. You know, instead of having him walk toward the camera, we should still do the foreground pan reveal, but have him walk past camera, go away from camera instead of coming toward it. That way, as we go past the foreground elements and we follow him going past the camera, we can have a shot of the town he's riding into, right? So cut close on wound bleeding. Uh, wait, slow pan across the desert, foreground elements of cactus and lizard, rack focus to decrepit sign of absolution reveal guy, uh, absolution. Let's change that. Any, any part in this, you can revise it so it works better. And that's the point of writing it is that writing's a lot faster than having to draw it. And so instead of a decrepit sign of absolution, rider goes past, rider goes away from cam, cam rack focuses, and we, and we see the town, the decrepit town he's riding into. Do we want to reveal the guy here? It doesn't seem like we want to. Quite yet. I think maybe we should save the reveal for later when the priest actually sees it for the first time, right? Like we don't need to reveal the the wound twice. We can reveal that he's bleeding, but we don't have to show the wound. This is kind of my thought process as, as I go through it. Like, do we need to show it here? Is it important? What do, we, what do I get if I show the wound now rather than later? There is no reaction from us unless it's a really weird looking wound but it'd be a stronger reaction if we saw it from the priest later on. So we'll do that. We'll do the wound reveal later. What else do we need to show to kind of set the mood? So maybe like medium shot of horse and hand hanging down, blood dripping off of it, off of it. At this point, we want to get him into the church. Let's look at the church again, right? See what that's about. Let's say he's walking. Let's say there's buildings behind here. He's walking up to it. Cut to down shot of, cut to, Cut to cross on church roof in foreground. We see a man dismount and walk OS-ish, right? So we, we establish he's by the church. Maybe, maybe pauses and looks up at cross. Cut to interior of church, doors swing open, man silhouetted by, silhouetted by a door frame. And Cut close on candles as they flicker. Cut close on maybe Jesus statue with light flickering across him. I'm trying to kind of set the mood a little bit. Cut to altar with a Bible. Pages flip across it or flip through it, eventually ending on special passage or something, right? Pan up to guy in black. Extends hand out for Bible, but then grabs 
bottle of wine, right? So do you guys kind of get what I'm doing with this? Like I'm, I'm kind of playing through my head, the shots of what I want to see, kind of setting the mood and trying to get a feel for what's working and what's not. Had I drawn all this out, this would have taken a lot longer than like the five minutes that I did for me to write it out. And so I want to be able to keep going back and forth through this list of shots and getting the sense of the scene already without having to draw anything. So we go back, cut to wide shot in Midwest landscape, sequel Monument Valley type shit. Slow pan across desert, foreground elements of cactus and lizard. There's a rack focus to crepe sign of absolution. Rider goes past the camera, video shot of horse, and we see like blood dripping into the sand. Cut to cross, down shot. Cut to the cut to the cross and maybe a down shot of the rider getting off. Walking toward the church, kicks in the door. He's silhouetted there in black still. We see the candles flicker. Um, cut to an image of the Jesus statue with the light flickering across his face. Maybe he goes dark to, to be some metaphor and then cuts to the Bible with the passage. He walks in, maybe his hand goes for the Bible, but then it grabs the wine. That's kind of my thought process already for getting the shots that I want to storyboard, right? And it's, it's a pretty quick process. Once you have the idea in your mind, it, it goes pretty fast. And I realized I missed a part. There's a part where he says, stay to the dog. Ugh, that seems a little weird. We should do that before he kicks in the door. So I think I need to put that back in, right? So cut to cross on church, roof to foreground. We see the man dismount and walk OS. Maybe pause to look up at the cross. Uh, maybe not down shot then. Maybe it's an up shot, right? So maybe instead of an up shot, maybe instead of a down shot or up shot, guy in shot, guy in foreground looking up at cross. It's important that I see the cross though. You know what? Uh, we need to make sure that it's a church though. We need to identify it as a church. And a cross is the easiest way to do that. You know what? Maybe we'll have him dismount in the medium shot. Blood dripping off. Medium shot of horse in hand hanging down. Uh, dismounts. Stops walking and dismounts. Stops walking and dismounts. Cut to two shot of dog and rider in foreground or a man in black in foreground says stay dog sits back dog lies back down on porch and then maybe pan up to cross and <laughs> kicks in the door i don't know that feels a little bit weird but this is kind of the idea already we're going to be at the end of it pretty soon in terms of talking about scripty storyboard i just start thumbnailing at this point like i don't think we need to go through all of it but we can I mean, at this point, I just keep going through being like, oh, maybe we should have this shot, maybe this shot, maybe a two shot. And so this is where all the other videos come in where I talk about like, oh, you need to understand how these shots relate to each other. You need to like watch movies with two people talking to each other. And then you just kind of put that in and then you think about like, oh, you know, we need to have some type of cool reveal for the preacher when he comes in. Otherwise, it's not going to make sense. And we need to make sure of the make sense of the background side. So it's like all these things slowly adding up together. And this part is probably the easier part of it, just writing down shots. So after I've written down quite a few shots, I'll just take it to the thumbnails. You know, I'll look up reference for Monument Valley because I think that's cool. Pretty, pretty dope. Think about compositional elements, how to make that work. Here's our rider over here. This is just thumbnails, so it's not huge that we understand everything that we want at this point, just kind of getting shots down. Monument Valley, and then this is the shot that I was talking about where we pan across, we rock focus across this stuff. I imagine it'd be kind of like this. I like to set my grid lines a little bit earlier. See, these two shapes have too similar of a size, so I don't want to do that. Um, I want to change one of them so it's bigger or smaller, so I'll make this one smaller that and then we pan over to kind of broken down sign of absolution uh, let's just call it absolute it's the vodka town yeah you want to have like z or s curves for cool guidelines so right now i'm on the second one slow pan across desert foreground elements like cactus and lizard we change that to a bird rack focus to de decrepit sign of absolution rider goes away from cam cam rack focuses and we see the town he's riding into so this is that second shot where we'll have him Ride into town. Maybe there's some gun holes in it. Someone shot it up. Maybe it's broken. The town of vodka, like I said, absolute. Maybe it's burnt a little to get whatever's. We have this cool S curve come in here like that. And then in the background, we start seeing a little bit of the town. Maybe the church should be the furthest one back here. Let's go back to what our church looks like. Okay, that's what it looks like. So in the very far, 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 far away in the distance, we have the church. 
But leading up to the church, we have all these other buildings. Whatever building. I don't know what a Midwest town looks like. You guys ever drive a Midwest town before? Something like that. I need to look up reference for what a Midwest looking town looks like, but just assume it looks something like that. We can make, maybe we'll make the church a little bit bigger so it stands out above the town. Cause that's where the church is important to this shot cause he's going to end up there. So maybe we'll give it a little bit more precedence in the shot. And then, so the last part of this that's most important is I would have another panel, but basically we would have him walk in like this, the guy on the horse. All right, so that's panel two. And then we cut to medium shot of horse and hand hanging down, blood dripping off of it, stops walking and dismounts. Okay, at this point, things that we need to figure out immediately because they're important. What hand is the bracelet on? Is it on his right hand or is it on his left hand? That's important because we don't want to show the bracelet until later on in the script when it's when it shows that it's magnetic. If we show it now, it might give it away, but it could also be something cool. If we show it now, be like, what the heck is this? So it might keep us in it. Also, where do you think he was hit? Where do you think he was hit in the... Okay, we'll do it later. The other thing we have to figure out is where is he wounded? They didn't talk about where he got wounded. So these, like, I'm like, man, what? They didn't give very much detail to where he was wounded. They didn't give very much detail to what this bracelet looks like. They didn't give detail to what he is dressed like. All these things that are important um, will probably be figured out on the design side. But if not, then as storyboard artists, we have to like talk with each other, right? Like I have to go to my buddy and be like, hey, what's, uh, what hand are you gonna have the bracelet on? What does it look like? Where did he get shot or like wounded? Is he... If he's wounded on the arm, is it the same arm as the bracelet? Did he get wounded in the chest? So we need to be consistent, right? Like since it all happens in the same episode, we need to be very consistent about where it happens on the character and how it happens and what it looks like. We will make the executive decision to have the bracelet be on his right hand. And we will also have the wound, whatever that might be, we'll have it be on his back. Where do people usually get the wounds when they get abducted? Has anyone been abducted by an alien? Um, I like to read about this stuff, I don't remember. They always have like weird like scars, like very geometric scars on their bodies. What if it was on his chest? That would be pretty cool too. I don't know. Cause like, okay, another thing we have to think about is like how big is this wound going to be, right? Like if it's the size of like a quarter, that's not too bad, like you can show that. But if it's something like the size of like a pizza pan, like a a pizza pan, that, that means he'd have to take off his shirt. It means something way different than if it was the size of a quarter. It's on his bicep. Min May says, says bicep, and that that makes sense. Maybe you could flex on and be like, oh yeah, check out my, check out my alien wound. <laughs> I'm all cut up. Oh. Again, like these are questions that um, kind of need to be figured out just because it's, it's important to the story, right? Like we need to know how to shoot it because if it happens on the right side, then we need to have him staged so that we can show it. If it happens on his left side, same thing. We need to figure out how we can show that. And this is why I don't do the drawings until the very end. So I can kind of figure out shot ideas first before I start drawing things. I assumed a gunshot wound. I don't, it, I don't think it's a gunshot wound because they say something about it being cauterized. And I think that's important. I think that's a talking about like the aliens did something to him. Oh, okay. There you go. Means something burned it half closed. The man just stares, news to him, and now as Meacham leans over the wound, the metal cross around his neck begins to twitch, lifting ever so slightly off the chest. Okay, they still, no, they didn't talk about where the man's wound is. Yeah, they don't talk about where it is. Okay, executive decision. He said he was shot. Let's, let's go back. Let's see. I don't think, oh, he does say it. Hey, looky. Yeah, good job, guys. See, you guys got been shot. Only two kinds of men get shot. Criminals and victims. What the heck? So what is this other wound he's taught? So he has two wounds? He has one wound where he's shot and then one wound that, that is cauterized? Odd wound looks cauterized. Studying the man's wound. So he got shot. Is it the same thing he got shot by and it cauterized it like a laser beam? Or did he get shot and then it got cauterized? Why would he be sewing it up if it's already cauterized? Yeah, why is he putting the hot needle through the wound if it's cauterized? I don't understand. It's not bleeding out anymore, but it's called. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, we're gonna make the executive decision that it he got shot, but he didn't, doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make, it can't be cauterized and open at the same time. It wouldn't make any sense. This is dumb already. 
fucking hate this. All right, here's how it's going to go. That's what I'm talking about. The script doesn't make sense. You can't have it be cauterized and an open wound. It doesn't work that way. And then he poured, he poured alcohol on it. So it, it has to be open then. And if he's going to get needled up, then it can't be cauterized unless it's there's like two wounds. Maybe there's two. This is where he would go to their director and be like, what is he talking about? What are we doing here? Let's get on the same page, figure this shit out. And if he doesn't know, then we would go to the writer and the writer would be like, oh, I meant to like this, right? Like I'd be like, oh, it's not, it, yeah, it's actually not cauterized. He's just like cut with like a, it's like, you know, like Star Wars where he gets his hand chopped off where it's cut open, but cauterized. I don't know. You tell, you tell me. Anyways, here's a cowboy. And this is, this is the type of note I would make to my, my buddies who I'm storyboarding with, I'd be like, okay, this is the guy. We're going to have a bracelet be on his right hand. And then we're going to have his wound be on his, we'll just say left bicep for convenience sake. And so I'd, I'd hand off this beautiful drawing to my partners and be like, yo bro, this is how it's going to look for the wound. We're going to have it look like this. And maybe I'd do a close up of it. Check it that sexy bicep. Let's just say he got shot. Well, the middle part is he got shot through and it's bleeding out but maybe the outside around it is burnt. Let's just say the outside is burnt. So it's like, there's like burn tissue around the wound for some reason. I don't know. That's what it'll look like. So I'd hand this off to my partners and we would be like, okay, we're synced up. We know what we're going to do now. Great. So I can go back now after figuring out some of the script. Okay, we're going to show the bracelet later. He's bleeding on his left hand and he's riding to town. So let's go back and do that. Let's not show the face of the writer yet. We don't want to to reveal. No, we are going to do the reveal of the rider when the priest says something about like, oh, you look like a man who's lost or whatever bullshit. Meacham hears the honesty and his voice knows a lost soul when he sees one. Okay, this is something else you have to watch out for. So in scripts, they'll say things that if you were to read it, it would be fine, right? Like Meacham hears the honesty in his voice knows a lost soul when he sees one. That makes sense to us as readers. Like if we're reading a book, okay, we believe that. But what does that look like? How do you show someone that hears honesty in his voice? Like, what is that face? What is that gesture? What is, what does that mean? We can't have a voiceover at this part. We can't have Morgan Freeman coming in and be like, and Meacham knew he was an honest man. Like, that's not going to be there. It's going to be silent. And we have this priest we've never seen before. And he has to make some type of expression that shows honesty. This is kind of like weird writing because it's not quite for us to see, right? It's descriptive, but it's not visually descriptive. It's not descriptive in that, like, if he wanted to write it better, it'd be like Meacham furrows his brow and like looks off to the side and then looks back at him and lowers his gun. That would be more descriptive of him having a change of emotion, but instead of he writes, Here, here's the honesty in his voice. What the fuck does that mean? Like, that doesn't mean anything. That means, it doesn't mean anything visually. So as artists, we have to kind of like fill in those gaps, but it's also infuriating because that doesn't help us add as visual artists, right? Like that doesn't mean anything to us. And having to figure out a way to show that is very time consuming and very difficult. As you can see, going through the script from when we read it to now, we've already uncovered a ton of problems that we hadn't, we hadn't recognized before. We didn't recognize the wound. We didn't figure out what side the bracelet was on. We have these weird cues about the priest that we don't know. We don't even know what the priest looks like. Is he in his like frock and whatnot? Oh my God, what kind of gun is he holding? What kind of, all these things where you're just like, oh, this is, this is kind of the things you, you have to like think about as you go through it. And that's also why storyboarding takes so long. It's a lot of problem solving more than anything. Does this make sense guys? I feel like I've explained everything that I would about storyboarding at this point is just storyboarding it out now, like choosing shots, figuring out how to stage things. But otherwise, the basics of my process, read, reflect, write, draw. And throughout the whole process, you're kind of redoing things and changing things. So you want to find the most optimal way to do that. The process is pretty simple. There's not much more for me to talk about in terms of that. I think the complexity comes in in having to choose shots, having to understand story, having to, you know, put it all together and then eventually draw it. I think that's the hard part. Yeah, that's, that's everything. Thank you.